done in a drawing room then. Um, it was a type of piece or type of presentation that had a very short vogue. Uh, but it was a, kind of the second vogue for it because back in oh, the time of Gluck, the end of the classical era, uh, especially in Germany, people would have poetry readings. You know, Goethe and all those kinds of people get together and read their, declaim their poetry. And someone had the idea it might be nice with a bit of piano noodling around in the background. <laughs> and having heard that and thought it was um, interesting, a number of composers started to compose pieces that were basically poetry declamations with musical scoring. And that's what this is. And Eliza Lehman has a couple of them, a couple of Oscar Wilde's. And this particular one, The Happy Prince, one of my favorites as a kid. I love reading fairies, fairy stories and folk tales and everything about magic. And my mother had gotten me um, a book of Oscar Wilde's fairy tales. Now they're not real fairy tales because of course I could tell they were written by a modern, modern-ish person. And they have things in them like little sarcastic remarks. You don't find sarcastic remarks in the Brothers Grimm or Hans Christian Andersen. But they are really tear-jerkery, and they're mm -hmm. also, they've got a strong moral message, but it's, it's in, encased in this beautiful, elegant, colorful package that I, um, I wept over copiously when I was a fourth grader in first grade. So this is Liza Lehman's uh, version of The Happy Prince. It's got a lot of the, of the uh, original words in it, but wherever she's cut a little bit of the text, she notes it very assiduously, so uh, we don't have any of this business with the composer being careless about the writer's words. We try to avoid that. Um, one friend of mine said that he thought it's, it was a little bit Wagnerian, the music, I mean the harmonies. So any of you who are pianists, take note of that. So now you will hear The Happy Prince. <laughs> Just 
as he was putting his hand under his wig, a large drop of water fell on him. Oh, what a curious thing, he cried. There is not a single cloud in the sky, and yet it is raining. The climate in the north of Europe is really dreadful. <laughs> then another drop fell. What is the use of a statue if it cannot keep the rain off? chimney pot, and he determined to fly away. But before he had opened his wings, a third drop fell. And he looked up and saw, ah, what did he see? The eyes of the happy prince were filled with tears, and tears were running down his golden cheeks. His face was so beautiful in the moonlight that the little swallow was filled with pity. Who are you? he said. I am the happy prince. Why are you weeping then? said the swallow. When I was alive and had a human heart, answered the statue, I did not know what tears were, for I lived in the palace of souls who see Daytime, I played with my companions in the garden, and in the evening, I led the dance in the great hall. Round the garden ran a very lofty wall, but I never cared to ask what lay beyond it, for everything about me was so beautiful. My courtiers called me the happy prince. And happy indeed I was, if pleasure be happiness. So I lived, and so I died. And now that I am dead, they have set me up here so high that I can see all the misery of my city. And though my heart is made of lead, I cannot choose but weep. Solid gold, said the swallow to himself. Far away, continued the statue, far away in a little street, there is a poor house. One of the windows is open, and through it I can see a woman seated at a table. Her face is thin and worn. She is embroidering passion flowers on a satin gown for the loveliest of the queen's maids of honor to wear at the next court ball. In a bed in the corner of the room, her little boy is lying ill. His mother has nothing to give him but river water, so he is crying. Swallow, swallow, little swallow, will you not bring her the ruby out of my sword hilt? My feet are fastened to this pedestal, and I cannot move. I am waiting for in Egypt, said the swallow. My friends are flying up and down the Nile and talking to the large lotus flowers. Soon they will go to sleep in the tomb of the great king. The king is there himself in his painted coffin. He is wrapped in yellow linen and embalmed with spices. Round his neck is a chain of pale green chains, and his hands are like withered leaves. Swallow, swallow, little swallow, said the prince. Will you not stay with me for one night and be my messenger? The boy is so thirsty and the mother so sad. I don't think I like boys, answered the swallow. But the happy prince looked so sad <coughs> that the little swallow was sorry. It is very cold here, he said but I will stay with you for one night and be your messenger. Thank you, little swallow, said the prince. So the swallow picked out the great ruby from the prince's sword and flew away with it in his beak over the roofs of the town. He passed by the cathedral tower where the white marble angels were sculptured. He passed by the palace and heard the sound of
the poor house. The boy was tossing feverishly on his bed, and the mother had fallen asleep. She was so tired. In he hopped and laid the great ruby on the table beside the woman's thimble. Then he flew gently round the bed, fanning the boy's forehead with his wings. How cold I feel, said the boy. I must be getting better. And he sank into a delicious slumber. Then the swallow flew back to the happy prince. Tonight I go to Egypt. And he was in high spirits at the prospect. He visited all the public monuments and sat a long time on top of the church steeple. When the moon rose, he flew back to the happy prince. Have you any commissions for Egypt? He cried. I am just starting. Swallow, little swallow, said the prince. Will you not stay with me one night longer? I am waiting for in Egypt, answered the swallow. Tomorrow my friends will fly up to the second cataract. The river horse couches there among the bulrushes, and on a great granite throne sits the god Memnon. All night long he watches the stars, and when the morning star shines, he utters one cry of joy, and then he is silent. At noon, the yellow lions come down to the water's edge to drink. They have eyes like green mirrors, and their roar is louder than the roar of the cataract. Swallow, swallow, little swallow, said the prince. Far across the city, I see a young man in a gallant. He is leaning over a desk covered with papers, and by his side is a bunch of withered violets. He is trying to finish a play for the director of the theater, but he is too cold to write anymore. There is no fire in the grate, and hunger has made him faint. I will wait with you one night longer, said the swallow, who really had a good heart. Shall I take him another ruby? Alas, I have no ruby now, said the prince. My eyes are all that I have left. They are made of rare sapphires. Pluck out one of them and take it to him. Dear prince, said the swallow, I cannot do that. And he began to weep. Swallow, swallow, little swallow, said the prince, do as I command you. So the swallow plucked out the prince's eye and flew away with it to the student's garret. It was easy enough to get in, for there was a hole in the roof. Through this he darted and came into the room. The young man had his head buried in his hands, so did not hear the flutter of the bird's wings. And when he looked up, he found the beautiful sapphire lying on The next day, the swallow flew down to the harbor. He sat on the mast of a large vessel and watched the sailors hauling big chests out of the hold with ropes. Heave ahoy, they shouted as each chest came up. I am going to Egypt, cried the swallow. But nobody minded. And when the moon rose, he flew back to the happy prince. I am come to bid you goodbye, he cried. Swallow, swallow, little swallow, said the prince. Will you not stay with me one night longer? It is winter, answered the swallow, and the chill snow will soon be here. In Egypt, the sun is warm on the green palm trees, and the crocodiles lie in the mud and look lazily about. stands a little match girl. She has no shoes or stockings, and her little head is bare. Pluck out my other eye and give it to her. I will stay with you one
one night longer, said the swallow. But I cannot pluck out your eye. You would be quite blind then. Swallow, swallow, little swallow, said the prince. Do as I command you. So he plucked out the prince's other eye and darted down with it. He swooped past the match girl and slipped the jewel into the palm of her hand. So they threw it on a dust 